Joining us now is Doug Clinton, Deepwater Asset Management Managing Partner. And some of the points you make, Doug, uh, are interesting, but I think it, it does make sense given what we're seeing with, with AI. But you point out that valuations in tech are sort of upside down, that typically software companies trade at a 30 percent premium to hardware companies on a revenue multiple, and now it's hardware at a 15 percent premium to software, and then, and then we'll go on it. There's another uh, something else uh, as, as far as earnings. Same story with earnings, but it's all about AI, and the build out is starting in, in hardware and down the road, I guess we'll see software benefit. That's the hope, and I think that's the story, Joe, that investors are trying to work through right now is we're obviously seeing the inflection. NVIDIA is the poster child of that in terms of actual revenue trajectory from this infrastructure spend. And we haven't yet really seen it on the software side. And I think that explains a lot of this divergence that we're seeing right now in the multiples between hardware and software companies. I do think it probably makes sense to start to try to look at some of these software names, but the challenge to me is you have to be really patient because we're still really early in our view in terms of this AI infrastructure build. I think it could still last several years. And so even if you start to look at software now and say, hey, there's a relative value here, you may have to wait several years before this hardware thing even starts to slow down. <laughs> but we're, you would say this is all uh, to be expected, where we are, we're on plan right now, everything, there's, there's, there's no trouble signs yet from these, the, what, what you're seeing. It, it, it is different, right? It, it is, and I think, you know, we asked this question, what's different now? Because there's a lot of things that rhyme when we see these technologically driven booms and bull markets. There are things that rhyme with the dot-com boom of just 25 years ago. But I think there are things that are different now, too. And I think the thing that is particularly different here is that machine intelligence is almost entirely reliant on compute. It's entirely reliant on infrastructure. And it sort of scales linearly right now. So the more infrastructure we build, the more data that we're using in our models, the smarter that our AI gets. And until that paradigm changes, it's kind of hard to see why this hardware would slow down because ultimately the biggest companies in the world have a lot of money to spend. And if they can create artificial general intelligence, it will be a huge win for them. So if you are totally sold uh, on AI in, in, in the future, is it too late to, to buy NVIDIA or, or do you think you should look at, you know, down the food chain a little bit for, for something that's not, you know, that's undiscovered? Relatively. We've, yeah, it's hard to find the undiscovered one purely, Joe, but we have been trying to look a little bit more down the food chain. I mean, two names down that food chain that we do like are Arista, Anet. They just had some positive commentary related to Broadcom's strong earnings last week, uh, where there's good adoption trends for Ethernet in data centers, and Arista makes switches that would be directly beneficial to that. Uh, Vertiv, VRT, is another name. They make liquid cooling solutions for data centers. And when you think about how will AI evolve, chips will get faster, they will draw more power, and they'll need unique cooling solutions to handle the heat that these chips throw off. Vertiv offers a solution for that. So I think if you look down the chain and you can find companies that still have these catalysts that maybe haven't been fully realized yet, that's the way to play hardware. 